everyone, and welcome to episode two of Charting the Classics. Today, I will be talking about the astrological signs and placements of the characters of Pride and Prejudice. So if that's something that you are interested in, please stay tuned. And if you'd like to see more videos where I conjecture what the astrological signs of famous characters in any kind of media are, please consider subscribing to this YouTube channel. I am uploading every single day in December for Vlogmas, or at least attempting to. So let's just get right into Pride and Prejudice. Like I did with my Jane Eyre video, I'm going to start with some lightweights and then get up to the heavy hitters later on in the video. So we're going to start with Mary. Mary Bennett, who's one of the Bennett sisters. I'm pretty sure I got all of them. I really hope I didn't forget one of them, but if I did, please let me know in the comments down below. So Mary, I think that she is a Virgo sun, Virgo moon, and Virgo or Taurus rising. That's because she's an incredibly practical person who is not afraid to say, I told you so, and loves to expound upon all of the things that she knows. I feel like she would be a Virgo rising if she's described as being very tall of lush or looking and she would be a Taurus rising if she's described as being short but I don't really know if her appearance is described in the book but in my mind she just has like really big eyes and like these really big glasses and she's just always like reading and trying to get as much information as she possibly can and she's I, th I think I gave her Taurus rising because she's like loves to tell people the things that she's learned she wants people to know how smart she is that is Mary Bennett Next up, we have Kitty Bennett, and I think she is a Taurus, Sun, Gemini, Moon, Aries, Rising. Again, I feel like Taurus, Sun, because there's a way, like, Tauruses being the second sign in the Zodiac can kind of allow themselves to be subsumed by a larger personality. They're often the, like, um, sidekick to the superhero or whatever. I think she's a Gemini Moon because she runs around with Lydia all the time and she really likes to like have fun and kind of be a city girl. She's young too but she's also like not I don't think she's so far gone as Lydia is like she's not so like obsessed with having fun experiences. She's a little bit more able to be reined in. And then for Aries Rising I looked up what Aries Rising looks like and in my head that's just like what kitty looks like. I'll try and put some pictures up of some like famous Aries rising so you can kind of see like what I'm thinking about in terms of the look but Aries is your rising sign is also considered to be like who you really are as a person and I feel like Aries need like constant stimulation and they need like a lot of fun and like a lot of different things happening all the time and that might be why kitty was more inclined to to go along with all of the things that Lydia had gotten them into. Okay, so next we have Lydia. So next up for Lydia, I gave her Gemini, Sun, Sagittarius, Moon, Libra, Rising, and Gemini, Venus. In my mind, Lydia is just like very beautiful, but kind of, um, gets put in the in the on the back burner because she's one of the younger siblings in the Bennett family and Libra risings are noted for just being very gorgeous she's also the first person she's also the first daughter in the family to get married and I feel like that's a very like Gemini thing to do is to get married super young and very randomly <laughs> like they'll just you'll be talking to them on the phone and you're like what did you do this week and they're like yeah you know I went grocery shopping me and my friends went on a trip to Austin I got married and I read a couple really good books like just like not something that they really think about is something that's like super duper I don't know if it's that they don't think about it as super duper serious but they're just kind of like not afraid to take that leap in life like if they feel it they're just ready to do it immediately and that's also why I gave her Gemini Venus as well because I feel like Gemini Venus is like a very stimulated of it. they need like they need stimulation in their relationships like sexual stimulation but also mental stimulation more than anything else and I feel like that is probably what draws Lydia to Wickham initially like she thinks he's cute or whatever but she's like getting her stimulation from all the other soldiers that are in town but what really draws her to Wickham is when she's able to 
have conversations with him and talk to him and when they go away together I think she was like oh this guy is so smart he's so much older than me he has so much more experience than me a Gemini Venus wants to feel like their partner is smarter than they are and like they can learn something from their partner constantly but Gemini Venuses are also very inconstant in a way like they will give up on a relationship the second they get bored and I feel like Lydia and Wickham are not going to make it past the first full moon um I also gave her Sagittarius moon because I said this in my last video, but Sages love to just like do have an experience. They just love to do things. <laughs> they're just gonna do it. And it's not it doesn't like they're not gonna feel remorse for taking a leap, ha taking an opportunity doing something that they've wanted to do. Like, even if it is technically quote unquote wrong, like they're they don't care. They're gonna do it because they wanted to do it. And it was right. It felt right for them in the moment, even if it was dangerous, even if it was stupid, even if it was amoral by whomever's standards. Their standards are different. <laughs> they're, they don't have morality standards. They have fun. St Next up, we are going to talk about George Wickham. And I went back and forth about his placement so often. I ended up landing on Wickham as a Capricorn Sun, Sagittarius Moon, Gemini Rising. I gave him Capricorn Sun because I feel like he is dark-sided Darcy. They're very similar and that's probably why Darcy likes him so, or not why he likes him so much but why Darcy um is so wary of him because he can kind of see himself in Wickham but Wickham is the side of Capricorn that is willing to manipulate and willing to break whatever rule they need to break in order to keep up appearances of being a good worthy upstanding person there's a there's a way that capricorns can be kind of amoral like they don't um they're not they're just like not afraid to break the rules to get what they want but in doing so they want to maintain the appearance that everything is above board so it's not chaotic good I think it would be like more chaotic neutral honestly in the D, D of life I feel like he's a Capricorn sun probably a Sag moon because Sag moons to me are just like off the wall like they're again they're going to do whatever it takes to get the experience out of life that they want to get out of life and that might end up meaning that they manipulate people or lie to people or cheat or steal but as long as they are having fun it doesn't really matter to them that much and then for Gemini rising I like I, again thinking about like what he looks like to me he looks very like tall and thin and that's something that I've heard about Gemini risings is that they're very like tall and like read thin and I see him in my head like in a top hat or something um I feel like Darcy as a Capricorn rising is tall but more lush like broad wide whereas Wickham is like a low stick a little willow stick blowing in the wind um so yeah next up I want to do Jane and Mr. Bingley so for him I thought really long and hard about this and I asked my friend what she thought and then ended up giving him basically all of her same astrological placements so I gave him Gemini Sun Gemini Moon Libra rising and Taurus Venus. And I kind of want to talk about Mr. Bingley and Jane together because they're like inextricably linked in my mind. Okay yes so for Jane I gave her a Libra sun, Pisces moon, Cancer rising, and Cancer Venus. So I'm gonna start out with Mr. Bingley. Um I think he's very malleable in a way that a lot of air signs can be, but he's also loyal. And so that's why I feel like I wanted to throw the Taurus um, Venus in there because like in his relationships, I feel like he probably prioritizes his relationships to a level where like in his mind, he's like, I've known Darcy the longest. I've trusted him for so long. I can believe him when he says that he's concerned about a relationship that I might have with someone. So even if like he knows that he wants to be with someone, he's not going to do the thing that like an air sign or a fire sign would do and be like, fuck you, I'm doing what I want anyway. He's going to be like, okay, well, you said this to me. So let me take it into consideration as a Taurus Venus. 
we don't hear a lot from him. We don't hear a lot about like what he does with his time, but there's an idea that he's kind of like a lush. Um, he's a little bit like he gets into relationships really quickly. He's easily he's I, I in my mind, he's like very easily swayed by worldly pleasures. And that to me also aligns with a Taurus Venus. Gemini sun, Gemini moon, Libra rising. This is a person who can't make a decision to save their life. And I again, I feel like the way that he was so in love with Jane, but hearing that Darcy didn't think that her family was basically up to snuff enough for him to marry her, that was the deciding factor for him as opposed to anything like internal or any like gut feelings or whatever. And also I feel like Gemini's like their feelings change very often in particular Gemini moons because they have that mutable moon sign and mutable moons can be quite changeable because they're mutable and so there's a mention earlier on in the book that there was somebody else that he was like madly in love with the season before and now it's Jane and they don't really they don't really think that it's going to last but I think because of some of Jane's placements and her traits and the fact that she's got a good head on her shoulders, she's able to really like ground him down and get him to commit to a relationship with her as opposed to like the way that he just kind of was like madly in love with that other girl and then moved on and doesn't even remember what her name is. So for Jane, I think she's a Libra son because she's very diplomatic. She's very able to see like all sides of a situation throughout the book. She's constantly telling Elizabeth, well, if you think about it from this person's perspective or saying, well, I don't really think that that person had like mal intent in doing whatever it is that they did. But also, I don't think I was debating whether she would be a Libra moon or a Pisces moon. And I don't think that she's a Libra moon because I feel like Libra moons have a little bit more bite to them than Jane does. Jane is very much like a kind, soft, gentle soul. And she sees she's very like altruistically minded. She sees the best in people. She's not just diplomatic. She really truly sees the best in people and like assumes the best of people. And she also has that martyr complex that Pisces tend to have where she's willing to sacrifice herself and her own happiness for what she thinks might be the greater good. So she knows that she's in love with Bingley. She knows that Bingley is in love with her. But there's some reason outside of her control that's keeping them apart. And so instead of her continuing to like push the situation and trying to force it, she's like, no, you know, it was meant to be. If this is how it has to be, then I just won't be with him and I'm going to be okay. She also, to me, has a Cancer Rising. I don't know. I'm going to, again, put up pictures of celebrities who are Cancer Risings. To me, I feel like Jane is pretty and like a very soft kind of domestic way that Cancer Risings can be pretty. They kind of look like the girl next door. Do you know? So for, I gave her Cancer Venus because she has like a very domestic sense to me. Like in, in my mind, I imagine her being a mother, um, taking care of people, but also, so like, she's just very, um, constant and I don't, I don't know. I don't like level. I think, yeah, I think that's what I mean. She's just, like, very level in her relationships with people. Like, she's very caring and maternal to all of the people around her. And she's especially incredibly caring to her sister, Elizabeth. She, like, shows her that she cares for her. But I, I think there's, like, mention of them braiding each other's hair. They sleep in the same bed when one of them is feeling really sad. She just, like, she seems like such a sweet person. And to me, like, the Cancer Venuses in my life are just, like, so sweet and kind and fun to hug. And just, like, there's just, I don't know, there's something about them that's just very heartwarming. And and they're also romantics in a way that every water Venus is a romantic. They might not be as dreamy as a Pisces Venus or as obsessive as a Scorpio Venus, but they want the love story. They want the like the beautiful um, romance that you tell your kids about, like how the two of you met. They want that just like very full romantic relationship and I feel like that's what Jane feels she can get 
from Bingley. Okay, so finally, rounding out this list, we have Darcy and Elizabeth Bennet. So, I've, I've thought about this a lot, and I felt a lot about this, and I loved, like, talking about this, and just, like, oh, it's just so fun for me. So, for Darcy, Capricorn everything, pretty much. He, in my mind, is a Capricorn Sun, Virgo Moon, Capricorn Rising, and Capricorn Venus as well. And I'll explain more about that soon. And then Elizabeth, I think, is a Cancer Sun, so the opposite sign of Capricorn, which is probably why they clash initially. They go from enemies to lovers because they're on the surface, their outlooks on life, their mindsets are so diametrically opposed, but then that you think about it more deep and it's like, oh, we actually have more in common than we might think. So Cancer, Sun, Taurus, Moon, Aries, Rising, Virgo, Venus. They're compatible on every level, I think. And I just, I just, I love them. I love them. Okay. So I think I'm going to go like their sun signs, their moon signs, rising and then venus so for elizabeth i think she's a cancer son because she's obsessed with her family she really loves her family and cancer is a very family oriented sign i know that like even from anecdotal evidence i've known a lot of cancers in my life who are just like they're family people like they like to be at home they like to be surrounded by people that they're related to they're going to do things that their parents have done or they just like, they just want, they want to feel a part of that community. It makes them feel safer and more comforted. There's another, like, there's this other aspect of cancers that is very um, calculating and precise that I feel like a lot of people miss out on when they're describing them as like crybabies and super emotional and manipulative and all of that stuff. Like, I feel like those can be aspects of their personalities, but I think they're like, I just I always think about cancers as experts in a field. They're very exacting in the way that they do things. I think about like Solange Knowles and um, even Ariana Grande, like the way she lays her tracks together, just very precise, very exacting. The emotions are there. The emotional side of them exists. But there's also this other more complex, deep side of them that is able to understand why they feel the things that they feel and not just be a slave to it and also like able to have a very strong presence in the world like cancers are a cardinal sign and they're the second cardinal sign after aries and i feel like cardinal signs are very um assertive a, a, a very assertive energy in this world and that's also part of why i gave her an aries rising but we'll talk about that later so i think elizabeth is a cancer sun and then darcy is a capricorn sun this is the archetypal mother and father darcy is ambitious but he is under he understands how the world works he i i feel i think of capricorns as people who um they might not necessarily believe in or agree with the rules of how society works, but they know how to play the game so that they can succeed as best they can. Um, Capricorn sons, they're not the most outwardly emotional people, especially because their sister sign cancer is like their trademark is being emotional. Capricorn sons will feel a lot just all, all up in here. Um, and I think Darcy's practicality, his pragmatism and his understanding of how the world works is the thing that initially turns him off from the entire Bennett family. He's like, these people are absolutely ridiculous. They might have an ancient name or like be gen descended from gentle people or whatever, but the way that they act, the way that they comport themselves is not conducive of that. And so I don't want them anywhere near me or people that I associate with because I know that people are going to judge us based off of that. And they'll make that snap decision and that snap judgment and then think about it more or feel about it more honestly down the line and be like, oh, wait, actually, I wasn't correct. So that's their sun signs. For their moon signs, I gave Elizabeth Taurus moon because she's very stable and fixed. And I feel like I see Taurus moons also as a very um, emotional, not emotional, a very 
uh, what is it? A very familial sign because the moon is exalted in Taurus and the moon also rules the sign of Cancer. And so that to me tells me that there's usually some like strong family bond there. Like you might, you might be like, everybody has a strong family bond, but no, everybody doesn't. Some people don't like their family. Some people don't spend time with their family. Some people have very contentious relationships with their families. And Elizabeth does have a contentious relationship with her family. Like it's not placid completely, but her family is her rock. Those are the people that she is loyal to before absolutely anybody else. Um, and the other thing is that the Taurus moons can often be very slow to anger, but once they are angry at someone or once they do dislike someone, they will hold a grudge. And she certainly holds a grudge against Darcy for a lot of the book. I think Darcy has a Virgo moon because he is a very steady person. He's not easily affected by like nonsense. He's very serious. Like Virgo moons have a very serious um, disposition and affect. But there's something incredibly deep about them and very deep about the feelings that they feel. And they're the type of people who will analyze their emotions and think through their feelings instead of really allowing themselves to feel them. But then once they do like take that time to just like let the feelings sink down and just allow them to ex to exist however they're going to exist, then that's when they kind of start to really understand what's happening in a situation. So like when Darcy goes to propose to Elizabeth and he's like, he is basically like, you're ugly, you're poor, and you're stupid, and I hate your family. Do you want to marry me? And like, other people would be like, bruh, what? But he's thinking about all of the justifications for this feeling he's having. He knows that he loves her. He knows that he has strong feelings for her, even in spite of all of these things that on the surface are wrong with her and her family. And so he has to just make that justification out loud in order for him to explain why he is proposing to her when he's proposing to her. And she's offended by that because of course she would be offended by that. And then later on when he takes a step back to actually like think about his feel, not think about, but like to actually feel his feelings and feel sad and hurt and rejected and all that. He's like, oh wait, actually I shouldn't have done that. And I shouldn't have approached it the way that I did. And the other thing with Virgo placements is that they're incredibly critical. We don't even have to go any deeper on that and very critical of themselves. So he first pushes that criticism outward to Elizabeth and her family. And he's like, this is everything that's wrong with them. They don't deserve to be near us. But then when he realizes that he was being judgmental and stupid, he turns that criticism inward. And he's like, Oh, I was so mean. I really I hate myself so much. So for their rising signs, I gave him a Capricorn rising and I gave her an Aries rising. And this is the only point of like incompatibility really in this chart. But those are both cardinal signs so there's a similar way that they express themselves and show up in the world I feel like he's a Capricorn rising because he's like in my again in my mind he's very tall and thin and he has kind of like a severe face um and he just looks serious and to me Capricorn risings always look very serious but there's something about them that is like that might draw people to them, especially if he's a Capricorn rising and Capricorn Venus. That means he has Venus in the first house. And when people have Venus in the first house, then they have this ethereal look about them. Like they, like you can't quite keep your eyes away from them. Darcy to me is not somebody who fades into the background. He's someone who you notice when you go into a room, but you don't quite understand why, because he might look regular. They're also like very mature and organized and driven. And to me, he's like, he's willing to up to the expectations of what someone in his position has to do. Like he takes care of his tenants. Oh, I think Pemberley, he takes care of his tenants at Pemberley, because that is his inherited land. And he has a pride in his ability to live up to the expectations of this role that he is playing. But there's also an aloofness to a Capricorn rising, a way that you can't completely get into the core of who they are and um, what they are just in a, your first encounter with them. There are some rising signs who will just like give you everything when you first meet them. Like, hey girl, like, I'm 
so excited to meet you. Like, a, I think of, like, a Gemini rising or, like, a Pisces rising. A Pisces rising won't necessarily be that, like, open and bubbly, but they'll give you what they want you to know about them. And then there are other risings, like Scorpio rising or, like... Did you need something? But then you like get to know them more and more and you really see what the what what's underneath, so to speak. Okay, so then for Elizabeth's rising sign, I gave her Aries rising because there's something about her that's very like restless and won't be tamed. Like she doesn't initially through initially at the beginning of the book, she doesn't really want to get married. And she kind of sees marriage as a, a ridiculous tradition, a way for a man to own a woman. And then eventually she meets someone who she thinks is worthy enough of her that she wants to marry them. That to me is very Aries rising. Like, I'm not going to do this just to do it. I'm going to do it because somebody deserves for me to do it. She's also like incredibly brave and opinionated. She's not will she's not afraid to express herself. Again, when Darcy proposes to her, she's not scared to tell him that was incredibly rude. Even though he is of a higher station than her technically and he has his family has more money than her family, all of this stuff. He's a man, she's a woman, all of this stuff. She's like that was a horrible thing for you to say to me. And this is this is what else is wrong with you and this and this and th like she just she's goes in and she's going to tell him her opinion about him i don't remember what i was in the middle of saying because i just had to delete a bunch of storage but yes so oh yeah they can seem aries risings can seem quite scary or intimidating to people who are encountering them so I feel like Darcy was intimidated by her when he met her and that made him uncomfortable. And so that led to him lashing out as opposed to just like, I mean, he's a man in the 1800s. Is he really going to think about his feelings? No. And then finally for their Venus sign. So I gave Darcy a Capricorn Venus and Elizabeth a Virgo Venus. I feel like they both have very practical Venus signs. I To me, a Virgo Venus... They could go their whole life without getting married. Like, it's not a priority to them. They do want love, but, like, love is something that makes them kind of nervous because they feel like they're not experts in that field. And it's also a thing that you can't really be an expert at. Like, you can't win love. You can't make it so that love... You can't, like, beat the game of love or whatever. You just kind of have to put yourself out there and put your heart on the line. And that's very scary for a Virgo Venus. And then a Capricorn Venus is also somebody who's very practical. Same. That person could go their entire life without getting married because to them, marriage is about more than the like physical paper that you're signing. It's not just a transaction, especially I think in the 1800s, like the way that marriage was so transactional, like men pretty much purchasing women. I feel like somebody with a Capricorn Venus would want to be in a relationship where they felt like they could be on an equal playing field with their spouse so that they're actually partners in life as opposed to a like owner and owned relationship. And that's because commitment is so important to Capricorn Venus and you can't commit to something if you don't have your own autonomy. So I think that's also probably why Darcy was really attracted to Elizabeth to begin with because she has that Aries rising. She has that kind of like fiery energy. She's very much her own person as opposed to someone like Caroline Bingley who is willing to just be whoever Darcy needs her to be because she really wants him to marry her for whatever reason. So those are the astrological placements of the characters in Pride and Prejudice. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more videos of me charting the star signs of characters from classic media, please let me know down below what movies, TV shows, books you recommend. And if you like videos like this, please consider subscribing to my channel. I will be uploading to YouTube every single day in December. I really got to get some of this footage off my phone because I 